Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On Podcast series, King Lear. Episode 6, It Must Be the Stars. For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. Just look with your ears. Ride quickly to your husband, Goneril. Show him this letter. The army of France is landed. I shall. Seek out the villain Gloucester. At once, sir. Hang him instantly. Whoa, you mean with rope? Pluck out his eyes. Damn. Is that after or before we... Silence! Leave him to my displeasure. Edmund, keep my sister Goneril company. The punishment I'm obliged to inflict on your traitor's father is not fit for your eyes. Advise the Duke of Albany to prepare himself immediately for war. We are committed to do the same. Our messengers will keep us both well informed. As you wish. Farewell, dear sister. Mm. Farewell, Edmund, Lord of Gloucester. (laughs) Yes, sir. Hold. My lady. What's going on? Where's the king? I'm afraid the Earl of Gloucester has helped him escape. Some 35 or 6 of his knights found him, met him at the gate, along with some of Gloucester's servants. They've all gone with him to Dover. They claim to have well-armed friends there. Get cars ready for your mistress. My lord. Go, seek out the traitor, Gloucester. Pin him down like a thief and bring him to me. Though we should not execute him without a fair trial, the truth remains. Life is not fair. Who's there? We found Gloucester, my lord. That was quick. The ungrateful fox. Tie up his withered arms. What do you mean by this, your graces, my good friends? Remember that you are my guest. Do me no foul play. Bind him, I said. Make those knots so tight, they leave a trace. (laughs) Filthy traitor. Oh, you are unmerciful. Lady, but I am no traitor. Bind him to this chair. Ah! Villain, you will pay for your crimes. Oh, Oh. by the kindness of the gods, it is is disgraceful for you to pull at a man's beard. So white and still such a traitor. Wicked lady, these white hairs you tear from my chin will come to life and accuse you. I am your host. You should not be violent with your host's face, nor touch him with robber's hands. What, What do you want? What letters did you recently receive from France? And give us a straight answer, for we already know the truth. What is your relationship with the traitors who have landed in our kingdom recently? The ones to whom you've sent the insane king. Speak! I have a letter that only speculates about what's going on. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it came from a neutral person, not, not, not someone opposed to you. A cunning answer. A cunning lie. So not so cunning. Where have you sent the king? To Dover. Why to Dover? Weren't you ordered under penalty of death? Why to Dover? Let him answer that first. I am tied to the stake, but I must stand the course. Why to Dover, sir? Because I did not want to see your cruel nails tear out his poor eyes. Nor see your fierce sister sink her boar's fangs into his anointed flesh. You made him endure a storm so terrible that if it had occurred at sea... The waves would have risen up to extinguish the fiery stars. Yet the poor old man just added to the rain with his tears. If wolves had howled at your gates at that terrible time, you would have said, Oh, oh, St. Peter, let them in. Even the cruelest being would have given in to pity in such a situation. But you did not. I shall see vengeance swoop down on you from heaven for your treatment of your father! No. Unfortunately, you will never see it. But perhaps we can help you feel it. No. Servants, hold the chair. No. I'm going to pluck this man's eyes no, no, no. out. No. Please! Oh. Help me! Oh, oh cruelty! Oh, you gods! Oh. 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 Oh my, oh my, goody. oh my, oh no, now his 
face is crooked and he looks rather oh, odd. Someone do the other eye too, to even him out. Indeed. We shall see if you ever again shall see any vengeance. Please, please, no! Oh, no. Stop this, my lord! I have served you ever since I was a child, but I have never served you as well as I do now in telling you to stop! What's this, you dog? <laughs> ah! Oh! How dare you! Come on, then! Let's fight! Take your chances against me! <laughs> I've been cut. Give me your sword. How dare a peasant oppose us like this? Oh, there's a thing in my back drawing blood. Oh, oh, you killed me. Gloucester, you have one eye left to take revenge. I've injured him at least. Now, to finish what was started and take an eye for an eye. Out, no vile jelly! Where's your luster now? Holy dark and cold. Where's my son, Edmund? Edmund! Edmund, summon up all your strength! Let your love for your father inspire you to take revenge! For this horrible lot! Forget it! <laughs> Treacherous villain! You are calling for a son who hates you. It was Edmund who alerted us to your treason. He is too loyal to have any pity for you. How can this be? Oh, how stupid have I been? Then, oh, Edgar was wrong. Oh, my God. kind gods, forgive me. Help him to prosper. <laughs> Throw him out at the gates. Let the dog smell his way to Dover. Uh, uh, oh. What is it, my lord? How do you feel? I have been wounded. Follow me, lady. Throw out that eyeless villain. And throw the body of this treacherous servant into the dung heap. Regan, I am bleeding badly. This is a bad time to be wounded. Give me your arm. Uh, this way. Holmes! <clears throat> if our wicked master escapes justice, I'll stop caring about whether anything I do is wicked. And if Regan lives a long life and dies a natural death, then all women might as well become monsters. <laughs> Let's follow the old Earl. And get that crazy Tom to lead him where he wants to go. He's a homeless madman. His strange madness permits him to do anything. Go then. I'll get some cloth and egg whites to treat his bleeding face. Now may heaven help him. <laughs> to be the worst, lowest, most dejected thing of fortune makes me shake loose all fears and put on a new coat of hope. Who says the worst of times aren't ultimately for the best? When man is on his bottom, the only possible direction is up. I fear nothing, for I have nothing. Who goes there? I know this creature. This... That man there is my father. World, oh world, how you turn. My good lord, I have been your servant and your father's servant many away, years. Away, get yourself away, be gone, good friend. Mm. Your comforts can do me no good now. If you stay, you put yourself in grave danger. But alas, sir, you cannot see your way. I've lost my way and therefore need no eyes. When I could see, all I did was stumble. <laughs> oh, my good son, son, Edgar! Edgar! The subject of your deceived father's anger. 
If I could live to touch you again, it would be as good as getting my sight back. <laughs> How now? Who's there? Uh, uh, poor Tom's a cold. <sighs> Fuck it, I refuse to carry on this raid. Come, come here, fellow. And yet I must. Bless your sweet eyes, sir. They bleed. You know the way to Dover? Oh, poor Tom has been scared out of his mind. <laughs> Bless you, good man. God save you from the devil. Poor Tom has been possessed. Here, take this purse. Ooh. You who have been humbled by the plagues of heaven. I, I hope my misery makes your misfortune seem less. <laughs> God, let it always be this way. Let the spoiled and gluttonous man who makes laws to serve his own desires and doesn't see the misery around him because it's never struck himself. Let him feel your wrath until the redistribution of wealth rids us all of excess luxuries so that each man has just enough. Do you, do you, do you know Dover? Yes, Master. There is a cliff whose high and bending head leans precariously over the deep sea. Take me to the edge of it, and I'll pay you for your pains with a reward. Once I'm there, I surely won't need to be led anymore. Poor Tom shall lead. Give me your arm. Thank you. Welcome to my home, Edmund. I'm amazed my dull husband hasn't met us on the way in. <laughs> Madam. <laughs> Oswald, where's your master? Tell him our guest has arrived. He's still changing inside his chambers, madam. Yet you've never seen a man so changed. I told him that the French army had landed, and he smiled as if it were great news, then started speaking French. Then I told him you were waiting, and he replied, Oh, now I'm sad, and crawled back into bed. When I spoke of Gloucester's treachery and of his son Edmund's loyal service, he called me a jackass and told me I wasn't fit to serve. It's most strange. I'll speak with him. There is no need. It is my husband's cowardly character that keeps him from doing anything of risk. He chooses to be insulted rather than challenge those who offend him. But what you and I talked about earlier, Edmund, mm. our desire for each other, mm. it may soon be realized. Go back to see my brother-in-law, gather his soldiers, and organize his troops. When I get home, I will sit at the head of the table. We can trust Oswald to be our go-between. If you act boldly, you will soon serve me as your true duchess and mistress. <laughs> Wear this as a token of my esteem. <laughs> no, don't speak, but rather kneel. <laughs> this long kiss will raise more than your spirit. Now, you understand my meaning. Fare thee well. I am at your service until death. That, Edmund. Oh, what a man! Especially compared to the one who currently crowds the bed. You deserve me, Edmund, and all my services. My foolish husband will have to find rest elsewhere. <clears throat> Madam, here comes my lord. Ah, huh, I guess I'm finally worth your greeting. No, not at all. No man can trust a woman who will toss out her father like trash. A woman who breaks relations with her bloodline is like a branch that sucks all the moisture from the tree. 
Your only fate is to wither or become a fetch stick for a dog. Quiet. You weren't cast to play the fool. Wisdom and goodness seem vile to the vile. Like filthy vermin. They can only smell themselves. What have you done? You two tigers. Not daughters. What wicked deeds have you performed, you barbarous degenerates? You've driven the old king mad. Your own father. Even an angry bear would kiss his poor head. If the heavens don't send down avenging angels to punish these crimes, then surely these are the end of days, and humanity will eat itself. You lily-livered jellyfish! You call yourself a man, yet you take everything lying down, turning the other cheek as if you like getting slapped. Mm. The French have invaded our peaceful country. Your territory is at risk, yet you sit around like a whiny preacher bemoaning, Oh, why, gods, why? State your business. Uh, I have news for the lord and lady of the house. What news? The Duke of Cornwall's dead. Killed by his servant as he struck at Gloucester's other eye. Uh. Gloucester's eyes? A servant from his own house was moved by pity to oppose Cornwall. He drew his sword against his great master, who became enraged and attacked and killed the servant, <sighs> but not before he had received the wound that soon killed him. There is justice in heaven after all. That these crimes are punished so quickly is proof. But oh, poor Gloucester. Did he lose his other eye? He lost both, my lord. <sighs> Ma'am, this letter is from your sister and needs an immediate answer. Tell me what you know. How came this to be? On one hand, I am glad to hear that Cornwall is dead. On the other, Edmund is traveling with Regan, now widowed, and God knows how lonely a widow can be. If Edmund chooses her over me, all my fantasies will be no more than dreams. But, on the bright side, there are benefits to Cornwall being dead. The news is not so tragic. I'll read this letter soon and answer it. Where was his son when they did take his eyes? He was riding here with your wife. Mm -hmm. But he's not here now. No, my good lord. I met him on his way back. Does he know about this wickedness? Yes, my lord. He was the one who denounced his father. He then left the house specifically so that they could punish Gloucester without worrying about Edmund's feelings. Poor Gloucester. I now live to thank you for the love you showed our king and to avenge your eyes. Why has the King of France so suddenly gone back? You know his reason? He left something unfinished in his kingdom which he remembered after arriving here. It was important and dangerous enough that he had to return in person to deal with it. Well, who has he left behind as his general? The Marshal of France, Monsieur Lafarge. Did the letters you delivered cause Queen Cordelia to show any grief? Yes, sir. She took them and read them in my presence, and now and then a large tear trickled down her delicate cheek. It seemed that she was able to control her deepest emotions, even though they tried to overcome her. Oh, then she was definitely moved. Not to any burst of passion, no. She seemed to struggle between self-control and sorrow, deciding which would be best and eventually settling on both. You've seen the sun, how it can rain while the sun shines? That's how she was, smiling and crying all at once, only more lovingly. The smile on her lips seemed oblivious to her tears, which dropped like pearls from her diamond-lit eyes. If everyone on earth looked so lovely in their sorrow, then sorrow would be the mood of choice. It must be the stars. The cruel stars above that decide our fates. Otherwise, someone as good as Cordelia could not possibly have come from the same womb as those two witches she calls sister. Have you spoken to her since then? No. Was this before the King of France returned home? No, after that. Well, sir, the poor distressed Lear is in Dover. When he's lucid, he remembers why we're here and absolutely refuses to see his daughter. Why, good sir? He is pained by his powerful dishonor. He remembers how unkind he was to her, 
stripping her of her inheritance, sending her abroad and giving her share of the kingdom to her two bitch-hearted sisters? These things sting his mind so venomously that a scalding shame keeps him from going to see Cordelia. That poor old man. Have you heard anything about Albany's and Cornwall's troops? Yes, they are on the march. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. Well, sir, I'll bring you to our master Leah and leave you to attend him. I have important business that requires me to remain in disguise a while longer. When my true identity is revealed, you won't regret helping me. Please, come along. <laughs> Alas, it's the king. He was just spotted mad and as vexed as the stormy sea, singing aloud, wearing a crown of thorns, nettles, hemlock, burdock, and cuckoo, and all the other weeds that grow in our cornfields. Send a hundred soldiers to find him. Search high and low in every acre of the field and bring him here so that I may see him. All right, let's go. Ah, Cordelia. Doctor. I mean, your majesty. What cure can medicine provide to make him sane again? I'd give all my wealth to whoever can help him. There is a means, madam. Rest is the best to comfort old age. There are many medicinal herbs that can help him forget his anguish and cause him to sleep for a while. Then I'll water all those precarious herbs with my tears to make them grow in hopes that they will relieve a sick old man's suffering. News, madam. The British forces are marching this way. This we already know. We've been waiting for them. Oh, dear father, I'm doing this for you. This is why the great king of France listened to my persistent tears. It wasn't inflated ambition that made us invade England, but love. A daughter's love and my father's abused rights. The Play On podcast series King Lear was translated into modern English verse by Marcus Gardley and directed by Eric Ting. The cast is as follows. Keith David as King Lear, Bernard White as the Earl of Gloucester, Aldo Billingsley as the Fool, Christiana Clark as the Earl of Kent, Gina Daniels as Goneril, Francesca Fernandez McKenzie as Cordelia, Lance Gardner as Oswald and the King of France, Daniel Jose Molina as Edgar and the Duke of Burgundy, J.D. Mollison as the Duke of Albany and the Doctor. Tramel Tillman as Edmund, Amy Kim Washke as Regan, Rex Young as the Duke of Cornwall. Casting by the Telsey Office, Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. Voice and text coach, Rebecca Clark Carey. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Marcus Gardley and Catherine Eaton. Original music, sound design, and sound mix by Lindsay Jones. Sound engineering by Sadaharu Yagi. Additional engineering by Daniel Ben Shimon. Mix engineer and dialogue editor Larry Walsh. Podcast mastering by Greg Cortez at New Monkey Studio. Line producer Jordan Moore. Managing producer Robert Cappadona. Senior producer Miriam Lauba. Executive producer Michael Goodfriend. The Senior Manager of Business Operations and Partnerships at Next Chapter Podcast is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On Podcast series King Lear is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit ncpodcasts.com for more about the Play On Podcast series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play on Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at ncpodcasts.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And remember, anyone can see how this world works. Just look with your ears. Mm -hmm.